and to a brand new edition of the Believe in Carolina Panthers podcast. It is an open mailbag Monday. Uh, Desmond Johnson here with all-time Panthers lead and rusher Jonathan Stewart. Uh, Skylar Callahan, beat writer for Sports uh, for Sports Illustrated for the Panthers and the Hornets, uh, is actually at the stadium right now. He will be joining us in about, about 10 minutes. He'll pop in here. Um, double show today due to the holiday weekend. No late weekend show or late week uh, show on Thursday or Friday due to Thanksgiving. So we will give you our recap of Panthers versus Ra- uh, Raven- Ravens. Excuse me, I can't talk today. Panthers versus Ravens. And then we'll also do Panthers versus Broncos preview. Kind of squashing it all into this episode here. You know, normally later on in the week, we do uh, tell them why you're mad. We could probably fill up an hour uh, <laughs> with that today. So we'll, we'll probably get a little uh, tell them why you're mad action in here. Uh, also today and then um it's open mailbag monday so if you've got anything you want to talk about in terms of what we watched yesterday or anything around the league football related college football as long as it's football related it's all it's all fair game so definitely chime in you can just type it in at the bottom of the facebook uh watch video that you're watching right now or on the youtube uh video over at tobacco road sports radio.com before we get into all of that though quickly a uh, message from our friends over at bet online Football is back, and BetOnline remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. And as your continued source for all sports wagering info, BetOnline features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events like Major League Baseball, MMA, tennis, boxing, and even golf. Head over to betonline.ag to join and receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure you use your promo code BELIEVE. B L E A V to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts and where we start today. The Panthers on the losing side of this 13 to three uh, to the Baltimore Ravens uh, on the road. They have yet to win a road game this year. I didn't realize it uh, until this morning, but the Panthers have not won a road game since the Cam Newton return game last November uh, against Arizona. So it's been a little over a year since we've had a road victory. Um, and looking back on it, that might have been the peak of the Matt Rule era. That that game, and uh, and that uh, situation, Cam running for a touchdown, throwing for a touchdown, we all that. That was probably the peak, and then it just kind of from that point on. Let's uh, let's get instant reactions here from Panthers Ravens. Thirteen threes your score. This was a rock fight from the very beginning. Uh, Stu, the floor is yours. What were your initial thoughts as that game ended in terms of the Panthers? overall psyche um i mean let's start with the positives here um you know our defense has been playing lights out in my opinion throughout this whole year given the injury bug that they had you know early on um coming into this game playing the ravens they knew what the task was and you know they rose to the occasion which was stop Lamar Jackson in the run game. And they did all those things. I mean, the way that Jeremy Chin played, Frankie mm-hmm. Louvu, Brian Burns. I mean, you list the guys that you expect to play well, um, and, and they did that. Um, and, and it's good when you're watching a football game and you know the players that are going to, you know, come to play and right. they do their job. Um you know, on the defensive side, you can walk away from that game and say, man, we, we did what we could, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause that's a good football team, the Baltimore Ravens. And, yeah. you know, we'll definitely see that team, you know, playing in the playoffs. And, um, and so everything with that, I mean, the way that they responded with coach Wilkes, even um, you can see the defensive side of the ball, you know, they get it. They understand, you know, what it's going to take to to really get over the hump. They're doing all they can. Now, the offense, mm. they just got to just make some plays. Yeah. They just got to make, make the plays. Got to, And it goes back to the beginning of the year um, where we were just struggling you know, simply to just execute, um, you know, guys, you know, open, you know, down the field, you know, making the routine catches, you know, coming out of your break breaks, you know, well, um, 
being comfortable in the pocket, uh, run blocking, and, and moving the line of scrimmage, controlling the line of scrimmage. All those types of things are fundamental bases. You know what I'm saying? And um, we didn't really see it go our way yesterday. So, um, you know, it's one of those things that we've been dealing with all year and reacting to all year. And um, I know the fan base is getting tired. Um, but I will tell you that the Carolina Panthers are also tired as well. And they're trying to figure it out. Um, that's just just goes to show you how hard this game really is. Yeah, it's hard to win in the NFL. Let's start right there. Uh, and Steve Wilkes echoed that in the post uh, game press conference yesterday. I did clip some audio from Coach Wilkes. Uh, he was asked about how he felt about all three phases of the game from the Carolina Panthers. This was uh, Coach Wilkes's response. Uh, well, as a defensive coach, yes, but as a head coach, looking at the, uh, you know, the game in all three phases, uh, we just got to execute. Yeah, I love the way the defense played. It gave us an opportunity and a chance. Uh, offensively right here, we got to be able to uh, convert and get some things going offensively. And most importantly, the special, special teams, we got to come up with an explosive play. So kudos to the defense first half. We didn't make enough plays in the second half. I, t- I came away from that game uh, initially – uh, thinking that's probably the last time we're going to see Baker Mayfield uh, in a Panther uniform. He, it just wasn't enough. And and I know, I, you know, later on in the day, I realized, okay, yeah, those swirling winds and uh, the conditions weren't ideal to throw the football because Lamar Jackson wasn't throwing it around the park either. Um, li- actually, looking through the box score, the teams look similar in terms of mm-hmm. what they did other than uh, Baltimore stopping our run game. Uh, but we stopped Baltimore. So people don't realize going into that game, Baltimore had, Baltimore was trying to run for I think it was their eighth straight eighth, yeah. game uh, that had not been done since the '85 Chicago Bears. Um, <laughs> we limited them to 115 on 30 carries, so 3.8 yards per carry. The Carolina defense was putting in work uh, yesterday. This game should have been honestly a blowout because uh, we couldn't do anything with the football. We could not score, and if you can't score, it really doesn't matter how good the defense is. If we can, if we can only score three points, we're not going to really win any NFL football games like that, you know, uh, Baker Mayfield, just looking at his stats, 21 for 33, 196, about six yards per pass, two interceptions, no touchdowns. He got sacked four times, QBR of 20.4. Eventually it gets to a point where uh, if the player is continuously turning in the same performance, even with different scenarios around him, Maybe it's the player, you know, maybe it's Baker Mayfield, because no matter what situation we've put him in this year, his QBR has been like 20 or 18 or whatever it might be on a hundred point scale. Like he is not playing very well. And uh, I do know uh, this is open mailbag Monday. You, my boy blue did mention, I saw Baker hit some people in the hands yesterday on big plays and get rewarded with a drop. That is true. Uh, there were some drops yesterday, but it's the nature of the NFL. You, my boy, Blue. The quarterback's going to take the blame for that in the end of the day. Just like they get the 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 kudos and the flowers uh, with the win. They're interviewing Lamar Jackson at the end of the game. They're not interviewing an offensive lineman. So I, I get it. I just I don't want to keep making excuses for Baker Mayfield. I was trying to say this until Skyler came in because he might have a better idea of this uh, at the stadium. Uh, I'm curious as to who's going to start, uh, who, who's going to play, because really you're down to – uh, Sam and uh, Baker, because PJ can't play. He's got a high ankle sprain. Matt Corral is out for the year. There, there isn't anyone else <laughs> to put back there. So, um, mm. let's let let's just do it right now. Who would you rather have playing on Sunday? Sam Darnold, who we haven't seen at all this regular season in this offense, or would you give Baker another shot at home? Um. I mean, really, you got to wait to see, you know, how what status PJ Walker's in, right? So, I mean, he's injured, um, and so you're really not, you really can't make a decision. You think they would go and, back to PJ before giving Sam a shot? I mean, got to make make sure he, he's healthy as well, right? I mean, yeah, he's you know technically ready to play, but are they willing to put him out there while he's hobbled? Um, Who uh, you know, the, PJ? No, uh, oh, uh, Sam. Sam, Sam. So, I mean, you got two guys that are hobbled, you know, Sam's probably, I don't, we don't know a situation thoroughly. I don't. Um, and then I just look at last week, right? Like you have a game where 
execution on fundamentals is the answer to the reason why the offense wasn't successful. Um, you can point to every position as to that whole reason. Um, and should you bench a guy because everyone was executing poorly? <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately that question has been asked to books this year <laughs> and, you know, uh, but, and i mean like i've been I've, I've played you know on teams where i've executed poorly and you know different you know a quarterback positions you know executed poorly um and just that's why i just you know i say full wholeheartedly like it's hard to win football games in the national football league uh, um, perfect, perfect timing. Skylar Callahan dropping in uh, live from Bank of America Stadium. Got the crew all back together. First time in yeah. what? Two weeks. Uh, maybe two plus weeks. We've had all three of us together on yeah. this. And, and and what a game to discuss. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for, for all of us. Yeah, Skylar, tell us who who sh- who should start this week because I ain't yeah. gonna say Ooh. it because yeah. I don't know. That's where we were when you popped in the door. And you poked the head in right when we start talking about it. So who? Who would you – well, okay, let's start it this way because you, you're at the stadium. I'm assuming you've had a chance to, you know, ask Steve Wolf's questions, catch the vibe of the room. Did he say anything about who might start before you give your opinion on who should? No, he said he's still evaluating the tape and probably won't have a decision until Wednesday. He hasn't gotten into the Denver stuff yet, so that's his plan for this evening. So I'm assuming we'll probably have that answer by Wednesday. Okay. Um, typically, we get the starting quarterback on Wednesday too. So I, I don't know what, what direction they're going to go in. Now, when you go back to what he said last week, he said he wanted to get Sam Darnold in the game at some point in time before he actually gets his opportunity. Well, to me, that means like he wants to get him, whether it's in scrap time or maybe a package here or there, he wants to get him in there before he gives him the starting job. Now, mm. I don't know if you can <laughs> – if you want to still stick with that after what we just saw. Um, but I will say this, like Baker, I don't think he played – it wasn't his worst game. Like, I think for the there most part – yeah, There we go, Skyler. Yeah, I mean, I feel that. There we go. That's, what, that's kind of that's how you can't, you can't fault everybody. You can't fault one man for everyone's yeah. failures. But right. – I mean, he, he completed <laughs> classes. They didn't throw the ball downfield. You can't, you can't really blame Baker for the lack of downfield throws. I mean, that's just – that's Ben McAdoo. That's the way the offense was called. Now, and the weather, whether it was, like it was super, the super windy away. in there too. It was super windy in there too, apparently, because yeah. Lamar didn't throw it down the field either. So, I mean, were there times that he should have threw the ball away or at least got the ball off, like that fourth down where he took a sack instead of at least just throwing the ball up? I mean, yeah, there's there's throws that he'd like that back, I'm sure. But to me, I, like I, I just don't think the staff has the confidence in Baker or PJ to be able to throw the ball down the field and test the defense. And if you do that on a week out, week in, week out basis, you're not going to be able to really have a whole lot of success. You've got to be able to push the ball downfield and have a threat. So to me, I think you've got to at least give Sam an opportunity. Yeah. Cause I think out of the three, Sam's got the strongest arm and. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. And we, we have seen Sam perform well in a Panther uniform. We have yet to really see, cause I don't want to say like that PJ has performed well, He's just performed better than the, the quarterbacks we've had so far this year in that position. Because you go back and look at PJ stats, the games he played, they're not like jumping off the page or anything. He just he didn't do anything wrong for the most part. And was did what he supposed to do? He handed off the football, throw that five yard out. You know, he was just doing that kind of thing. I think teams are starting to really catch on to the fact that McAdoo's not calling a long passing game, hardly at all. Uh with Baker, it did open up a little bit down the field, but not noticeably much uh he's he was going a little bit more vertical than pj does pj kind of goes to the sidelines um, how do you think that how do you think that affects you know our run game with that mindset you just you just spoke on as far as what? going down the field you know i mean I would, ball down the field i would think if it's effective it's going to force the defense to have to kind of play out of the box a little bit but if you're not even trying to throw it down the field you can load the box up with you know eight dudes or whatever every time which looking at the box score, it kind of feels like that's what Baltimore did. Uh, mm-hmm. They only they, they held us to 36 yards rushing on 17 attempts. Uh, Deonta Foreman, 
11 carries for 24 yards. His longest run was 10 yards. Um, I never caught the vibe in this game that we had control of it or that we were going to take control of it. It felt like the Rams game in terms of feel where I, I couldn't get into that. it. Yeah, it just felt like uh, they didn't have the same spark that they did the week before. And I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's because it's the road or because Baker was starting or I don't know. I, I don't I don't know what, what causes that to happen, but I couldn't get into the game from the very beginning. Granted, I was uh, peeling potatoes for a pot roast or something at the same time. So I was a bit distracted <laughs> like around second quarter. I'm just sitting there peeling, peeling, peeling. I'm looking up and I'll see strange things happen like Bravion Roy get a, a, an interception at the line of scrimmage or, uh, you know, them overturning that uh who was it that fumbled was it shot smith that fumbled they whistled a play dead so i'm thinking it's over and then somehow they overturn it and give it to the ravens i'm like i didn't even know you could do that if the play was whistled dead i thought it was just unreviewable but apparently not um it's one of those games where it feels like we lost by more than we did and i think that's the thing i'm kind of carrying with me this week it feels like it should have been like 26 to 3 or something but but it wasn't well, I mean, really, outside of that, what was it, the a minute, minute and a half, like, swing that Baltimore scored those 10 points, I mean, it, really, it was really a tight game all the way through. Like, yeah, three, three. I don't think Baltimore played exceptional um, offensively. You know, Lamar really didn't have a whole lot outside of that one touchdown rush. I thought they bottled him up fairly well. Um, I, I thought they played a, fairly, a pretty good game, except for just offensively, they just couldn't do anything. Yeah. Jack Dixon asks, uh, Stewie, you can throw, right? Like, are we at the point where we need to do the, the uh, Vinny Testaverde, bring a dude off the street on a Tuesday, have him start? Man, look, <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to see me throw. <laughs> I'm like Uncle Rico from uh, what's, <laughs> that, uh, what's that movie? Uh, uh, Napoleon uh, Dynamite. Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> I got some mountain. film just like it, too. <laughs> <laughs> on the oh VHS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, something's got to give because hey, I, I mean, I, I was a I mean, quarterback in high school, but there's a reason why I was a backup. Man, look, this was the worst, the worst weekend for me, sports fan wise. Y'all know I, I call high school football for one of the top teams in North Carolina. They lost uh Friday night. So that was like, you know, high school football, when it's over, it's just done. Like it, it's yeah. it. And a lot of those kids. <laughs> They're not going to play football again. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that was the last game they're going to play for their career. So, I had that Friday night. Wake up Saturday. I do stuff for North Carolina a t They were playing Gardner-Webb, uh, Big South Championship. I'm producing that game. Winner goes on to the, the FBS playoffs or whatnot. a t loses. So, their season's over. It's just like, boom, done, over. Like, so all that's done now. I get to Sunday, and I already walk in the living room already knowing <laughs> like what's about to go down. Because we're away. We haven't won a road game in a year. It's Lamar Jackson. I'm like, are we going to be chasing this dude around all day? And then, lo and behold, the Panthers are like, yo, we're going to come in here and play some defense today. So I'm like, okay, maybe they can salvage the weekend. And then we just we just didn't have enough. Like It felt like we just yeah. didn't have enough at certain spots, quarterback mainly being it. Do you want to see Baker Mayfield – out on the field again or have you seen enough i mean for me i want to see anyone that <laughs> goes underneath the center just be successful um i believe baker mayfield can be successful like there's glimpses like i mean if you really look at the game yesterday like he was putting the ball like in places where he had a couple like goals. a professional like 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 he was doing is he was throwing the rock um, he, yeah, that one. And I mean, uh, Terrence Marshall. I mean, remember I mean we look at look at the look at the Minnesota Vikings game. Okay, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> 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 Who would you rather take yesterday, Kirk Cousins or Baker? You know what I'm saying? Like they both that's playing what, that's Dallas. Because <laughs> if they're both playing Dallas, I don't think it matters. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying though, like when you, when a, at that position, it's hard. It's hard for it's. It's easy for us to sit back and say, oh, he should have did this. He should have done that. And it's like, mm, I mean, he doing what he can. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they get paid too. So, That's true. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, that – and we – and coming into this game, you knew what time – you knew what time it was. It was, hey, stop Lamar Jackson and just score. 
Yeah. We just couldn't <laughs> score. <Yeah. laughs> and so that's the nature of this game. That's why it's so hard. And that's why football is the number one sport because it really tests a man and the, it really measures a man. And you walk away from a, a loss like that, you just got to look at yourself in the mirror, everybody. You, my boy, Blue. Call Matt Moore and see what he's doing if Vinny isn't willing to come back. Vinny says Verdi might be – he was 40-something when we brought him back that year. So he's got to be damn near 60, right? <laughs> yeah. Like in his mid-50s at this point. Where is Matt, Matt Moore? Matt Moore is an interesting panther tale. Uh, he was right there in that that gray uh, pre-Cam Newton, Jimmy Clawson – like that era, like right in there. He was in there. There yeah. was a large clamor for people saying he should start uh, here for the longest, I remember. Yeah. Um, he got him, then he got hurt. Yeah, yeah, he got hurt. Yeah, Matt, then, Matt, Matt Moore was solid, man. I, yeah, I he was a baller. I, mean, I enjoyed him as a teammate. He really actually helped me learn the offense <laughs> uh, pretty well. <laughs> he like went just, to you go, Miami? He yeah, yeah he went to dog. Miami. He was with the Chiefs for a little bit. Um I don't think that's true. Matt Jackson says Matt Moore is selling insurance in Gastonia. I don't think that's accurate. Uh, hey, Jack Dixon, stop being disrespectful. Yeah, don't, man. don't be disrespectful to former Panthers, don't be man. Disrespectful, man. <laughs> don't make me have to find you and, and put you put you out somewhere. We'll have Stu waiting in your bushes. <laughs> well, Matt, Moore, uh, Matt Moore was our purgatory QB. Like really, really similar to like the Hornets situation, though, because like the Hornets for years they've just kind of been in that weird spot where they weren't bad enough to get like a top pick or they weren't good enough to make a run in the postseason. The Panthers are like in the same spot with the quarterback spot because like, I don't know if anybody's going to be worse than Houston. Right. Like, I mean, and if they get the number one pick, Bryce Young's off the board. And I've already told you last week, Stu yeah. wasn't on, but I, I, I told Desmond, like I'm not high on many of these quarterbacks this year, like as everybody yeah. else. I'm yeah. not high on Bryce Young. You heard it here I'm first. Not, I'm not. Either. I'm not high on any of them. You know, Bryce but, Young, so CJ Stroud. Like, like, I don't if know. You don't, if you don't get Bryce Young, like, who are you going to get that's going to be that dude? And to me, like, you have to have a dude at quarterback in today's game. Like, and I, I just don't know where that's going to come from. Look at like Kansas City. Them having Pat Mahomes separates them like from oh. everyone. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. a franchise guy. Like, uh. People people go back and forth on Dak Prescott, but he's a franchise quarterback. Like you saw, Dallas is better when they have him playing like that, where they don't have everything on top of him, and he can just conduct the offense, as opposed to him having to be like Pat Mahomes, where he can be that extra guy to get you over the hump. We haven't had a guy like that since Cam Newton, and they 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 fumbled that whole process of transition. We're just not as lucky as like. Uh, like Green Bay. Green Bay has had two franchise quarterbacks for the past 30 years, you know, or uh, who else? Um, the Patriots had a franchise quarterback for 20 years. <laughs> you know, like we, yeah. we haven't had that sustained like there uh, for that guy because those guys don't come around all the time. And th that goes back to that discussion about tanking or whatever. We've got the, the top two quarterbacks picked in the 2018 draft on the roster right now. Like that doesn't guarantee <laughs> that we're going to be successful many, the top three how many teams can survive well not survive but how many teams can seriously make a push year in and year out with a quarterback like a like i'm not trying to be disrespectful but like a ryan Tannehill or jimmy garoppolo like only certain teams are built that way like san yeah. francisco has got a hell of a roster that's why they're able to do that tennessee's got a pretty damn good roster Carolina's roster is nowhere near those two organizations right now. That's yeah. why you see the struggles of Baker and the struggles of Sam and PJ. Like, for this team to kind of make that step, either the roster's got to get a lot, whole hell of a lot better or the quarterback spot has to have a dude at it. Do you uh, – Cupid, Cupid Cashman asks, will, will Anderson or quarterback with our number one pick? And this is what me and Skyler talked about last week. Uh, Stu, oh, I want Stu's thought on this. Yeah, I want to hear Stu on this. Do you go all out for one of these quarterbacks? Because, I mean, as it stands right now, we're going to be picking in the top ten somewhere, probably. And I know it's still November, so I really don't want to get too deep in the weeds with that conversation. <laughs> but would you go defense if Will Anderson's sitting there, or would you try your luck on one of these quarterbacks? Because the entire quarterback room is clearing out at the end of the season, except for Matt Corral, who's on a rookie deal. The other three guys are unrestricted free agents, and I don't know if they're going to keep 
any of the three. Well, if I'm GM and I got top pick, I'm going the best player available, hands down. And it's not one of them quarterbacks. <laughs> so, <laughs> are you on the uh, vet train? Like, uh, like I was saying, I'd go camp out in front of Lamar Jackson's house and be like, "Yo, look, I will give you three hundred million. Guaranteed. Yeah, I, I, will, I will give it to you. <laughs> come to Carolina, guarantee. Yeah, come on. I'm, I mean, if the Sean Watson's worth, if the Sean Watson's worth two forty five, guarantee. I'm, def- I'm, I'm Don't definitely thinking to myself, like, my money. <laughs> let's let's look at the let's look at the rosters of these teams around the NFL and really, you know, make a run at one of them. Like, I mean, if, if you brought Cooper Rush in here, right? Like, would you take Cooper Rush over or Jimmy what we G? Have? I'd hmm? take Jimmy G over what we have right now. Jimmy um, G. We, I mean, he was out there. Oh, uh, the backup for the Ravens. Uh, what's his name? Huntley. Huntley. He looked good last year when they had him out there when Lamar was hurt. I, I liked him, but apparently the Ravens do too. But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We've tried this whole bring in and rebuild a quarterback thing for the past three years. I don't know how long the fan base would stand for something like that unless you got a legit uh, name. Um, I would go after Lamar Jackson. I really would. Like, I would well, say the Ravens screwed up. You- if you get the number three pick, and that, and and those two top the top two quarterbacks are off the board, and Will Anderson's sitting there, sign, draft Will Anderson and go sign freaking Jimmy G. Like, yeah, you kill two birds with one stone because you've yeah. got pieces all over the place. Like again, Matt Rule, the one thing that I I, I admired him on was talent evaluation to an extent because their drafts were pretty good. Like I like what they've compiled over the past three drafts. It's just what he did with it after he had it <laughs> that just didn't yeah. compute. And I'm hoping that Fitterer was a lot of it from last year and that him and whoever the new coach is going to be will be able to, to fill those holes. What's your, what are you guys' thoughts on Steve Wilkes right now? Because I know we all love the man, but with more losses than wins, it, it's less and less likely he's going to get seriously considered to be head coach going forward, even though a lot of players are starting to pipe up to his defense, especially over the past – 10 days or so uh do you feel like wilkes is in the same boat as he was before this game or do you feel like that boat started to take the water no i think that boat is still that boat is boat is like taking off boy like yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> listen you can bring in the best head coach on paper if he ain't respected you're gonna have the same results that's true this man steve wilkes is respected they know his history. They know what he's about. People in the, you know, at the stadium, you know, see him and, and, and they love his presence. When you have a guy like that, to me, you know, you can't put a price tag on that. Like, and, and to me right now, like, the the defense played lights out. Like, let's not be crazy here. Like, our defense played really well. Um and you have that you have to give some of that credit to Steve Wilkes. He's a defensive coach. You know what I'm saying? So they did a great um, job. Defensive you know what I'm saying? I'm and so and, and, and so going back to it, like let's not it's not rocket science. Defense play defense, offense execute, and special teams be special. We just didn't do two things. The the two out of the three, we didn't do well. Mm-hmm. So let's go back to the drawing board. A coach that talks like that. I can ride with that. He ain't trying yeah. to overcomplicate nothing, which means eventually, you hate to say eventually during a football season, you'd rather say eventually when it's off season. But like <laughs> right now, like they, you just got to hope they stack some wins. I'm just, I've been saying it all season, but yeah. as, as, as bad as it felt <laughs> and as bad as it feels right now, y'all going to hate me for saying this. We still not out. No, you still got a chance. No. I wasn't gonna say it out loud on the podcast, you but still got a chance. Mathematically, you are chance. correct. Yes, mathematically, mathematically, we are still in it. The, uh, uh, you, I'm talking this way because I was on a seven, eight, and one team, and we had. I was a chance. gonna ask you this because this is where you guys were, right? Like, I mean, you guys were three, eight, and one, and then right. one through December, we're three and eight. We got what six games left in the season. Yeah, what was it? Bad. What did you guys do to like 
to man look turn it around. I'm gonna tell you, gonna tell you exactly what happened. We went to Minnesota. We played Minnesota outside in that cold. It was like minus seven degrees. And we lost that game. Special teams had like three block punts. I don't even know what it was. It was just a bad game. It was just too cold. We didn't want to be we didn't want to be out there. That was the game because the Metrodome or whatever, the roof caved in or something because of snow. We had we had to play Minnesota. We had to play in Minnesota. Yeah, I remember that. And so I was like, we didn't want to be out there. And it was legitimately in a moment, like after the game, like Coach Rivera was just like, man. Y'all better bring it next week. <laughs> like I because it was almost kind of like I know it was cold and that weather was not it. But whatever no. y'all when, they, when we get up. back home, <laughs> we better get it on. Like, and we played the Saints and we came and smacked them like mm-hmm. at their house. And then it just can just stacked on stacked and stacked. And the Atlanta Falcons, you know, it, it helps to have the Atlanta Falcons in our division because you know what they like to do? They like to lose games like Falcons, unexpectedly. Falcons going Falcon. Yeah, they're so going to do Falcons going to do 23 and, and let somebody come back and win, all those types of things. So we got chances out here um, <laughs> to really establish ourselves as a team um, that wants to win games. And, and you know, that's that's what I'm rooting for. Um, you know, as this as the season continues and comes to an end, but uh, yeah. Cupid Cashman saying, "Why is everyone saying it's Wilkes' fault for offensive play and not McAdoo?" I don't think any of us are blaming uh, Steve Wilkes. No for one's, no one's saying <laughs> that, the Wilkes ain't at fault for none of this. No, nah, we we cool with Wilkes. We've been blaming. If you can go check the tape, I've been blaming Ben McAdoo pretty much on time every we Monday. Well, we definitely ain't blaming <laughs> well, Wilkes. Well, honestly, I think our Thursdays, why you mad is Desmond's, why you mad at Ben Thursday? Des is yep. why you mad at Denver Thursday? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they keep yeah. giving us reasons. They keep yeah. giving us reasons to, to do this. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, I'm going to tell you why we mad, son. I'm going to tell you why we mad, son. <laughs> my, my thing with uh, with Steve Wilkes, like, look, I, I think he really – he gets – he understands the culture. He understands the organization. The organization understands him. And like Stu was saying – you can go out there and try to make this big, sexy hire, right? Like, you can go get the next offensive genius that's going to be, you know, the Sean McVay or the Kyle Shanahan. Those guys just don't grow on trees. And for a place like Carolina in the situation that they're in, you have to have a guy that gets it, that can command a locker room. And much like a quarterback, you want a quarterback that can that can kind of get everyone's attention, right? You want that same thing in your head coach. Steve Wilkes has that. And when you look at the de- the hand that he was dealt, I mean, let's just be honest. Like, he didn't have much to work with. Yeah. I don't care if it was Steve Wilkes, if it was Al Holcomb. I don't care if it was Ben McAdoo that got the interim tag. Like, it doesn't matter. The offense is what the offense is because of the personnel. You can't do much about it right now. You're not going to be able to do anything about it until the offseason. As Stu said, like, the defense has gotten better and better and better. So I like, like the defense. I like what they're if doing. You, if you have a guy like that that can command a locker room and can really run an organization, mm-hmm. like it just it all it takes is getting to the offseason and allowing him to to kind of make some moves to go in that right direction. I think Steve deserves the job. I don't care what I don't care if they lose the last six. I yeah. think he's the guy for this job. I, I would love for Wil- uh for Wilkes to get like a you know like a three year deal or something like that where you're not putting it out there for six years, $65 million like you did with Matt Rule. That was a lot of people raised their eyebrows at that when it first happened. At least with Wilkes, he had head coaching experience in the NFL before this. So, I mean, give him a three-year deal. Let him have an offseason to actually contribute with the draft and free agency and, and actually try to build this team how he sees fit because, really, he's coaching Matt Rule's team. Like, that's what's happening right exactly. now. It, he, he's basically kind of on co – not co-pilot, but like he's – He's kind of a he's, – he's like watching over a daycare right now. Like, you know what I mean? There's watching, a bunch of young watching kids. Watching somebody that's else's kids. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Bunch of young <laughs> really aren't his yet um, that that's are amazing. inexperienced. So, yeah, I mean, it's like being at a daycare. He got a couple kids in there that he that went to the church that he went to. Yeah. <laughs> so he know him a little bit. He got some, <laughs> some badass kids in there and they're awesome. all kinds of nonsense. But, and then uh, like the, it's all but with the court it's all the quarterback to me. The quarterback position is what's holding them back. Because if they just had a person that could come there and throw for two hundred yards every week and not turn it over, we're probably sitting here at the top of the the division right now. But granted it would be like at five hundred or whatever, but 
we would still be at the top of the division. If we just could get some kind of decent play at quarterback. I feel it's the main thing holding this team back. I can't name anything else. I mean, you got to feel so much for DJ Moore. Like, I mean, this dude could be putting up massive numbers if yeah. he just had something there. Yeah. I don't know how he averaged. He's averaged 1,100 yards his first three seasons. And I, I'm looking at the quarterbacks that were throwing to him, and I don't understand how. <laughs> like, how did he get to that every year? Uh, God, God. This year, but I haven't looked at his stats. But I, I don't know. Uh, we do need to get into real quick uh, Panthers Broncos. It's super early in the week, so we can only do so much. Uh, yeah, let's, let me tell you why I'm mad before we go over there. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you why we mad, son. I'm going to tell you why we mad, son. What, uh, tell me why you mad, man. What, what, what's up? The running back for the Denver Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's the running back for the Broncos? <laughs> What's his last name? Gordon? Uh, not anymore. Oh, Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon, yeah. Melvin. <laughs> Hold on to the ball, son. Oh, they just we, waved him. They did? Yeah, I just saw it. I was scrolling down. Oh, just, Lord. They just waved him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, Denver just Broncos. Oh. I'm, mad at y'all. I'm mad at y'all right now, as a matter of fact, too. Just the yeah, whole organization. Was- yeah, I'm just making hours. moves like that, just like yeah, but, getting rid yeah. of guys for just whoo, man. It's a hard man, look, Wait, listen. To so, according to NFL Network's in Rappaport, the Denver Broncos have waived veteran running back Melvin Gordon. The oft fumbling running back had another fumble at the one yard line during yesterday's loss to the Raiders. Damn, they lost to the Raiders and ended up being a game altering <laughs> play. Um, I mean, I mean yeah. my guy was carrying the ball like real, like, <clears throat> like real fundamental, like. But just upright, I'm uh, like, bro, you definitely about to get stripped. You know that. <laughs> like, you know that there's sometimes where I've been stripped. You know what I'm saying? Like twice, I've been stripped twice in one game, I believe. But uh, at least it's like you got, you see the ball here, and you trying to hold on to it. Yeah. <laughs> like, like when it's just uh, in the moment in that in that moment, you got to have a, a the panther claw. All right. Got the three fingers. Mm. Yeah, grip that it. thing down to your forearm, yeah. bicep. Hold it tight to your chest, brother. <laughs> and then wrap up. You was out here. You out there holding the loaf of bread, man. <laughs> <laughs> now he ain't holding nothing because he's unemployed. Uh, they, well, I didn't realize they man, cut him. I, I, hate, I hate to see that they cut him, though, man. Yeah. That's not great, man. You don't <laughs> want to see that happen. He had five um, in but ten games. I can't uh, really tell. I, I can't tell you what the Denver Broncos are doing, though. They just being Denver Broncos. I'll, uh, I can't stand the Denver Broncos. I'm <laughs> mad at the Denver Broncos. That's who we got this week, actually. I don't yeah. like the Denver Broncos. Russell Wilson I can't wait to him. play them. I can't yeah. wait to play them. <laughs> We've been waiting on this week for a while. Too. I didn't realize it was going to be Thanksgiving week when it went on. But uh, yeah, we'll get to predictions in a bit. Skylar, do you have one for uh, Tell Them Are You Mad Monday special edition? Yeah, I'm going to tell you why we mad, son. I'm going to tell you why we mad, son. So, uh, why am I mad? Um, <laughs> why am I mad? <laughs> I really don't know. Um, it's okay, man. If you're not you mad, that means you're happy. You're I mean, I'm cool right now. Like, now. That might change by the end of the week. But, um, yeah, I, I, I got, I'll got. i go with this. I, since we're on the why, why are you mad at Denver theme, um, I don't know why, why were the expectations so high for this team in the first place. Because mm. Russell Wilson was not great in the last few years in Seattle. Nope. And I think we talked about this before the season started. And I said they were going to finish dead last in that division. You definitely and, did say that. You remember when everyone was saying that was going to be the, like the greatest division of all time? Like yeah. when Wilson got in there and uh, – Who knew the NFC East would be <laughs> so dang good? I actually I actually said that the Raiders are going to be all right this year. Yep. Yeah. I, I didn't buy the whole all four of the AFC West teams making the playoffs or any of that bit. And I definitely didn't I mean, see the NFC East playing like this. But – uh or the AFC East. Yeah, yeah. What is, actually, weird. the AFC East was mine. Uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you why we mad, son. I'm going to tell you why we mad, son. Zach Wilson needs to sit down with a veteran quarterback and get taught how to talk in the press because he's going to lose his football team before he grows into it. You can't you can't basically uh, act like you're not the problem when you're the one throwing for 77 yards uh, on nine catches or whatever it was uh, against the Patriots on Sunday. You can't be like, you know, 
I'm above everybody in the in the locker room. And that's what it's feeling like it's starting to happen over there. Uh, I didn't realize the Jets were this good. Like, I know we played them. I didn't catch a vibe that they were going to maybe make the playoffs <laughs> when we played them. And they're sitting right there. Like, they're in a playoff spot right now. Uh, are they leading that division? No, I think Miami is. I think Miami's leading that division right now. Yeah, but Miami the Jets is. are right there. So, I mean, I- I'm a little mad that the Jets are better than us. Because that shouldn't be. Like, ever. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you why we mad, son. I'm going to tell you why we mad, son. How are the Jets a playoff team and we ain't? Like, what, what part of the game is that? Yeah, the Jets need to – Zach Wilson. You know, it, it's uh, – every now and then it's good to eat some humble pie. Yes. Okay? <laughs> and I don't know who's going to serve it to him, you know, within that organization. But it's always good to have a veteran – that's in that locker room that can serve a humble pie. Yo, and and yo. that's what and I feel like, you know, Joe people Flatton, can yo. be mad up people can be mad all they want to about how Zach Wilson's been and all that. Talk you can be mad. It's all up to y'all in that locker room to figure it out. And so we were figure it we out. Were, we were talking about this right before we came on the air where I was saying you know, it feels like there's a generation of, of new younger quarterbacks in the league that are coddled, like that didn't earn whatever it is they have. Like Zach Wilson didn't earn the starting position. He was given the starting position with the Jets. Uh, Pat Mahomes, he didn't earn it. He was given it. They traded off Alex Smith. Now he's performed. <laughs> he's done what he's supposed to do. Uh, and he's nah, the MVP. I'm 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 going to back, back that up, though, because Patrick Mahomes, the way he came in and started playing like that, he, he must have been doing just, some amazing things on that practice field. They were on <laughs> practice like uh, what he was probably eating there? that defense up every week. Like man, yep. we might as well, we might want to play him. And that team uh, was good with Alex Smith. They were in the playoffs, yeah. uh, so I mean, it wasn't like they were in a rush. But sometimes you can't just hold talent back. But it does feel like some of these younger quarterbacks, Kyler Murray, comes to mind that feel, uh, Danny yeah, they, they just feel coddled. Like before, it was you would sit behind a vet. And learn from the vet, and then when it was your time, you would you would play. I, maybe Aaron Rodgers is the last quarterback that that happened with that actually panned out. Because I'm trying to think of others that have had to sit behind. So now these rookies, Cam Cam started day one. You know, like they they're coming in ready to go, like right now. And I know I know he was not a top quarterback, but Kirk Cousins, he was mm-hmm. he, he was he was drafted in the same draft class as RG three on the same that's team. Right. Yep, yeah. that's right. So, yeah, and he so sat behind. Him. For you know a while, and now he's getting. Would you put Jimmy G in that in that category? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Put that on there. Uh, real quick before uh, before we get out of here though, because we're not going to be on later on this week because of the uh, the holiday. Uh, early thoughts on Panthers Broncos, uh, guys. We'll just go around real quick. Whew. The Broncos aren't very good. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we're at home. We're at home, so that helps. Uh, What's the weather going to be like? That uh, You know what? I don't know if they can go that far out, but I don't think they're calling for anything crazy. Uh, see if I can pull see, up. This weather says that Charlotte. rain. 42 is the low 62 high. So. Oh, okay. we're going to have a good day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Shoot, I'm gonna go ahead and just say we're gonna win this game. <laughs> Clearly. Twenty-four to ten. I feel like that's the score the we Denver, <laughs> the Denver Broncos gonna score ten points in the fourth quarter. Oh wow. Okay. So, so you put a narrative on it. So it's gonna be twenty four nothing. We're gonna be pitching a shutout. Yeah, we're gonna score twenty it's gonna be twenty four ten and the Broncos going to make a nice little effort towards the end of the game. It ain't going to be enough. Denver's three and seven, uh, just like us. They have allowed about 30 more points than they've scored uh, this year uh, so far. Um, Skyler? <clears throat> well, since Stu wasn't here last week and I was able to pick the opposite team and not, not get uh, crushed. Yeah, for I, yeah, I heard you. I heard you, too. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I, I'm gonna make Stu happy this week. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go with the Broncos. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going. Oh. With the <laughs> you wrong? You go. You definitely gonna be wrong this week. <laughs> Broncos ain't got a chance. Carolina. I'm going Carolina with a weird score. This feels like a weird score game, right? Twenty-two nineteen. Carolina. Okay. And uh, yeah, the Broncos—they they're terrible. 
I've said it all year. I said it before the year. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be one of those weeks where you, they're going to be talking about it on Monday, being like Russell Wilson really just lost to the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, I was going to say, I kind of – I'm on that vibe too where I feel like Monday's headline will be uh, is Russell Wilson washed or is Russell Wilson done? Basically what they just tried to do to Dak Prescott last week and what they tried to do to Aaron Rodgers two weeks ago. And then they came out and had great games like after they got trashed for the entire week across national media. Uh, the problem is Russell Wilson doesn't have – any bullets like to do that with like this Denver offense I'm looking at it I'm just like like I don't understand why they gave this dude a quarter of a billion dollars like I, yeah. I don't I really don't understand it um I'm gonna go <sighs> we're at home so that does help and it is a, a one o'clock kick I believe so okay. that helps too West Coast team right. actually or is it a four I don't know <laughs> I, think <it's laughs> like, I think it's a one o'clock I think it's one o'clock I think uh I can't get to the Panthers. Yeah, it's one o'clock. It's a one o'clock. Okay, so you're playing playing a West Coast team, one o'clock. The defense is kind of rounded in the form. It, it, the problem is it's hard to pick if they're going to win or lose because I don't know who's going to play quarterback. Like, I don't know. Is it Baker Mayfield? Because if it is, then we're going to play a certain way. Is it P.J. Walker? Then the offense is going to look a certain way. I don't know what the offense looks like with Sam Darnold. So I think Sam Darnold's going to start. And I think the Panthers are going to have – Mm, my mouth is like, don't say it. <laughs> I think they're going to have the best offensive showing of the year against Ooh. these Denver Broncos. Um, I like it. <laughs> I'm going big. I'm going to say like something eye opening. I'm going to say Panthers 31, mm. Broncos 10. So, I think, so you I, saying so? What you saying is Jeremy Chan going to get a pick six? I think we're going to get some or defensive a, turnovers. I think they can bait Wilson a into a score. couple of interceptions. Uh, I, I I honestly feel like Sam Darnold's going to start this football game, and the offense is going to look completely different than it has the past well the entire year because <laughs> there's there's no other place to go. And Sam actually has an arm that can complete some throws. Baker did complete some throws on Sunday. He had the one to Terrence Marshall late uh, that he was running for his life and took and threw it. I think it was on like a third down and long or something. And Marshall hit it, caught it in stride. Uh, down in the red zone, I believe it was. Stuff like that. So Baker could actually do that. I'm pretty sure Sam can do that, too. I'm pretty sure we've seen him do it. He just didn't have an O-line in front of him. This will be the best offensive line Sam Darnold's played in, uh, behind in his entire professional career if they put him out in the field. They've got weapons for him. I yeah. kind of need to see it. I need to see Sam Darnold in this before I finally well, complete whatever, Well, whatever they do, man, I want them to be successful. Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield. PJ Walker, whoever it is, when your number is called, execute, execute, just execute. Just go out there and ball out, man. And to and to Stu's Time defense, to, to Stu's defense, because uh, he did mention this earlier in the broadcast. Even though we're three and eight, mathematically, <laughs> we are not out of this. Uh, I'm trying to find our. Show you right. Show you I'm right. Trying Show find, I'm trying to find the division, and I can't seem to. Hold up, what everybody else is right now. Not out of oh, here. Okay. Tampa Bay's five and five. We're three games back from Tampa. Uh Atlanta's five and six. New Orleans four and seven. We're sitting at three and eight. There's six games left to play. Uh our upcoming schedule we got at Bron well, Broncos here. We go to Seattle next week. Uh following Pittsburgh here, Detroit here, at the Bucks, at the Saints to end the season. That's not a daunting schedule. Um in fact. That I don't even gonna say it because every time we <laughs> every time we do that, it backfires in our face. Let's just Bronco Sunday, one o'clock on Fox. I think we've all picked the Panthers to win in some variety. Um, let's just see what happens. So uh you can catch this episode and previous episodes of the Believe in Panther podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. You can see the video on the Tobacco Road Sports Radio YouTube channel, along with previous episodes. You can stream us on all major podcast platforms, Spotify, Google iTunes, uh, Luminary, and more. Uh, typically, we're twice a week, but of course, with the holiday, we won't be on later this week, so you can just rewind and watch this again if you choose to. Um, and that's it for us. So we're all picking a Panther victory Sunday. They kind of need one. Uh, we'll see if Sam Darnold makes an appearance or not. For Jonathan Stewart, for Skylar Callahan, I'm Desmond Johnson. You've been watching and listening to the Believe in Carolina Panthers podcast here on Believe Podcast Networks. Keep pounding.